What's up everyone, Resident Evil Biohazard here, aka RB for short, and welcome to what is actually the first let's play of this channel, and as you can see here, today we're going to be playing Resident Evil Zero, oh my bad, sorry, <clears throat> Resident Evil Zero. I gotta I got do the announcer voice. So yeah, this series is actually part of a larger series. So I know this channel is brand new. I know I'm like it's mainly focused on all your content, and a part of that uh, is gonna be let's plays. So I'm gonna be doing a let's play on every single uh, like at the very I'm not gonna say mainline, but important Resident Evil game. So every single important Resident Evil game in chronological order. So uh, in according to the timeline, not release date wise, uh, timeline wise. So I'm going to be doing a full Let's Play of Resident Evil Zero, Resident Evil 1 Remake, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Resident Evil 2 Remake, Code Veronica X, um, what's after that? Oh yeah, Resident Evil 4, Revelations 1, Resident Evil 5, is it in Revelations 2, RE6, RE7, and RE8, there we go. I have to remember like the timeline wise, as in like when they take place. And um, yeah, I'm really excited. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and pick Zero here, and let's just play through them. So I've played through all of these games, um, except for Revelations 1 and RE2 Remake. Those are the only two let's plays I'm gonna be blind. But as you can see here, we're about to have an intro, yep. I thought this intro was kind of one of the lamer ones when it came to this series. It's not horrible, but... I don't know, it's try it feels like it's trying too hard to be scary. So it's just a little bit of background, uh, like, basically involving, like, my stance on Resident Evil Zero. So I actually just recently platinumed this game. I, I got the platinum, and, uh, yeah, I, I'm in the middle, at the time of this recording, I'm in the middle of working on a huge review for it. And, yeah, I really wanted to like this game my second time around. But guys, even though I'm better at it and I don't necessarily hate it, it's not really what I would consider a good game. Definitely not one of my favorites at all. So as you can see here, Resident Evil Zero. So you, you can see here, this is all my saves. I did a Billy normal run, a Billy hard run, normal Wesker mode, which is amazing, easy, which is kind of like my first run, uh, easy again, yeah. And then this was like the first ever like run of it that I did, like, all the way back in 2020. So yeah, no, I, I got the platinum for this game, and um, I'm not going to be going on any of my load files, by the way, I'm not going to be using any unlockable weapons, I'm going to be starting new, and just going to the game. So, yeah, always right, still, definitely not one of my favorites, but I am very interested in playing it with you guys and commentating through it, so yeah, without further ado, let's begin. Alright, alright, let's hear it, let's hear it, are you guys ready for it? I miss the announcer voices, man. I miss the an announcer voices. Okay, so as for the display, I can go original, which is basically like a 4 3 ratio, but um, for this, for the sake of this let's play, for the sake of the, the quality, I'm gonna go wide. Same thing with alternate controls, I can go with tank controls, I don't mind going with tank controls, but I've already played this game a gazillion amount of times, uh, might as well just go alternate, it just makes it easier, more convenient. Um, and this is one of the harder RDs, so yeah, I probably need them. Uh, subtitles, we'll, we'll cut those on, just so you guys can hear what the hell is happening. All right. A Midwestern town in America, Raccoon City, a solitary island far off in the sea, Rockfort Island, an island that would become the second Raccoon City, Sheena Island. Mm -hmm. There are still many unanswered questions about these seemingly unrelated yet intensely traumatic events. There was at the time of this game's no release. That the international enterprise umbrella was somehow involved. Somehow. As to the origin of this faceless corporation. When was it established? By whom? To this game's credit, it does... How was it the T-Virus created? It does answer all of these questions, but probably in like the most anticlimactic fashion I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, the CG looks good though. For 2002, this CG looks pretty good. Obviously it's more cleaned up and polished since, you know, this is a HD release, but yeah, no, for the most part this is still 2002 technology that we're all seeing, and this game looks phenomenal. I went back and looked at old footage of how the original looked, it's near identical to the way this game looks already. It's it's so good. Oh, we're about to have... <laughs> about to have typical RV cheese right here. Just a man over a large cliff. 
They really wanted this guy to be scary. They, oh my god, they wanted him to be so terrifying. He is like the least terrifying RE villain we've ever had. Alright. This would be horrifying. Can't really survive that. Can't really survive being, uh, consumed by hundreds of leeches. T-virus infected leeches. So yeah, I'm not gonna, by the way, I'm not gonna spoil, um, like, I've already played this game before, but I'm not gonna talk about spoilers, just in case you guys haven't experienced this story for yourselves, and you want to, you know, experience it alongside, like, the way it's being presented. It's so cool seeing Bubble Team here! Never. What's going on? Engine failure. Emergency landing. Man, it's really convenient for, uh... It's really convenient that they had an engine failure. Like, right next to the mansion. That would lead to all you want. See, wouldn't it be cool if it was, like, Wesker who, like, sabotaged the engine? That would, that would be pretty sick. Check the current position and investigate the surrounding area. Like, Wesker sabotages the engine intentionally, like, planning for them to crash, like, somewhere in Raccoon Forest, which would lead to the mansion, where he could therefore test, like, the BOW, like, combat data. Captain! Hmm? What happened? Order for transportation. Prisoner Billy Cohen, ex lieutenant, 26 years old. Court martialed and sentenced to death July 22nd. That's my birthday. He was court martialed on July 22nd. Let's go. Those poor soldiers. They were good men just doing their jobs, and that scum murdered them and escaped. All right, everyone, let's separate and survey the area. Our friend is Edward seems pretty interest like a pretty interesting Bravo team member. He seems very temperamental, but we barely know him for like any of the time we see him. <laughs> that's one thing that this game also dropped. Uh, th there's a lot of narrative uh, hiccups this game suffers from, but the main one, I wish we got to see more Bravo team. They could have totally pulled like a Red Dead Redemption 2. On us, obviously that game was an out, but like I'm just using that as an analogy. They could have get given Bravo Team more screen time in this prequel, and then when we see them all like dead in the first game, then that would actually, you know, that would actually make us feel for them a little bit. It'd actually make you sad to see them in the way in the states that they are. And yes, I will be talking about all one spoilers, guys. Come on, this game came out afterwards. It's a prequel. I can't really talk about this story without mentioning only one spoilers, alright? This game sets up a lot. Alright, and just like that, we're here. Um, I'm Rebecca, so I will be using alternate costumes, definitely. Oh wait, I probably don't have any unlocked in the save, do I? Oh, I do! Let's go! So, I have, um... The regular Stars 2002. I, I think Rebecca looks cute in every outfit. By the way, Rebecca is like the main RA character that I sent for. You have your Claire lovers, you have your Jill lovers. I am absolutely dedicated my life to Rebecca. She is beautiful. So there's Stars 2002, there's Western, there's uh, Letter. I think she looks really cool in Letter. And then there's Team Wesker. Um, uh, I might go Letter or Team Wesker. Yeah, I'll go Team Wesker because like you, you, get, you unlock Letter off the bat. But you don't really see a lot of people doing Team Wesker, so I do Team Wesker. And plus, it looks really cool. And it's like Team Wesker costume. I think that, that's pretty awesome. Alright. And unfortunately, Billy only has one costume. Now, 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 there are tons of costumes you can buy for this game because Capcom could not, like, restrain themselves with this 2002 V release. They, they, they really went heavy with the microtransactions. This would look horrifying. I love the atmosphere of this train. It's easily like my favorite section of the game. Alright, here we go. The first zombie reveal. Oh, spooky, spooky. Scary skeletons. 
Okay. All I gotta do is shoot this guy and just run right by. Oh, no. That's not where I wanna go. Okay. <laughs> Oh, so something important I need to do as well. I need to make sure that uh, my infinite ammo or like unlockables carried over from previous saves. I'm pretty sure they don't, because it's like an all new one, but just in case. Ah, right, yeah. Everything's fine. I also decided to play on normal difficulty, because easy is, as you can imagine, way too easy. And hard mode on this game is absolutely fucked. Alright, you do not want to do hard mode at all. Hard mode is, like, playing this game on hard mode is honestly probably the hardest resident game I've ever played. People talk about Code Veronica all the time. Code Veronica is not that bad. At least to the extent people make it out to be. This game, though, on its highest difficulty, yeah, no thanks. I, I beat the game with only, like, 15 handgun bullets left. There's, there's Billy Cohen. What an asshole. <laughs> I love the way he says stars. You have stars. So I'm afraid our little chat time is over. Wait, you're under arrest. <laughs> no thanks, Dollface. I've already worn handcuffs. That's badass. That's like a badass line. I've always worn hand I've already worn handcuffs. Just holds up the broken handcuffs. Billy could have been really cool. They kinda of twist him in this. <laughs> and it just comes like rolling out of a window. That's great. Zombies and monsters. <laughs> but, by the way, how does he know? Like, okay, I get it, right? Like, it's pretty easy to sight a zombie, but how does he immediately know there's zombies? Usually, like, people are confused in these zombies, so he's like, is that actually a zombie? Oh, God. Okay. Alright, uh, I gotta reload. Bop. Okay, so this is uh, out of here, and I'm gonna steal Edward's handgun ammo because that's what good teammates do. So the only nitpick of this chain sequence is because it's so linear, you have to find yourself spinning a lot of ammo. Actually, not really. Here, all right, I actually have a trick that I might try to utilize here. I might get my ass bit, but let's see if I can do it without wasting this handgun ammo. So what what it is? You go right here. Shoot this guy out! Yeah! Okay, I was able to not spin hang on anymore. This game and only one remake weren't made for alternate controls, so it's really easy to juke out zombies. It's it's laughably easy. Especially in remake because the grab is way slower. Enrico! Hello! Can you read me? Please respond. Twenty three people. That's a lot of people. <laughs> That's really see this is really cool because keep in mind this is Rebecca's first mission. Like she's a rookie. She's eighteen years old. The same age as I am, which is crazy to think about. Like literally just Fresh out of the academy, kind of like Leon, but way younger. And she is being told that there is a man on board the same train as she is that has killed 43 people and was in institutionalized. Like, that would be terrifying. I mean, you have the zombies too, that kind of, you know, contributes to the fear factor. But yeah, no, it's, this is a really good setup. It's going to be dangerous from here on in. Why don't we cooperate? Cooperate no. with you? Listen, little girl, if you haven't noticed, there's some pretty freaked out things on this train. And I, for one, want to get out of here. I don't think we stand a chance doing it alone. You expect me to trust you, a wanted felon? I don't need your help. I can handle this on my own. And don't call me little girl. Yeah. All right, miss, do it yourself. What should I call you? The name is Rebecca Chambers, but that's Officer Chambers to you. Well then, Rebecca. <laughs> 
you go and try while I wait here. I like this dynamic at first too. It's like you have this jackass Billy, right? Or at least you think he's a jackass. Then you have Rebecca, who uh, I don't even read the files. I already read all of them. I, I, if you guys are confused, I can just talk about the lawyer because I'm a law guy. Um, but yeah, and then you have Rebecca, who uh, who's really trying to like act intimidating, act as this like officer who's in, who's running the show, but he's not taking her seriously at all. It's such a cool dynamic, right? This game had a really cool premise, even without like the focus on Bravo team still. Excuse me, sir. Now this is awesome. Sir. And the CG in this game is so nice. Look at the lighting. <gasps> Heads aren't supposed to do that. That looks horrifying. Freaking got shape shifting leeches in here. No thanks. I was way farther in the train than that. <laughs> it is miraculous that Billy did not hit her. Oh, so wait, I just kind of noticed, like, kind of a. Uh, Plot discrepancy, if that makes sense. Because these leeches are supposed to contain the T-virus in them, and they were all over Rebecca. It is miraculous that she is not infected. I, I get they probably didn't bite her in the short time they were on her, but still, it's kind of weird. I can't take this shit seriously, man. How is this supposed to be scary? <laughs> Oh, look at him, he's terrifying. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be a I'm not trying to be an ass, but it, it, it this game is unintentionally pretty funny at times. Who's controlling the train? Go and check out the first engine car. Listen, we've gotta cooperate with each other from now on. You got that? Well, I don't clue in, girl. Or maybe you like being worm bait. Alright. You just remember, I will shoot you if you try anything funny. Fine. Now take these. <laughs> Doesn't take her seriously at all. Because I like, fine. Give me a call. All right. And this game is kind of misleading in this cutscene uh, when it comes to the gameplay because it directs you to go this way, like in the direction of the first engine car, but that literally leads you nowhere. That's a playing manual. Instead, you're supposed to go the opposite direction. You're supposed to go over to this window. So that's kind of weird. Alright, so I'm going to give all of my handgun bullets to Billy. Because I guess about to be out of commission for a little bit. And then also, I'm going to switch Billy's costume. There's only one costume I can use, which sucks. But, yeah. Typical jacket costume. Alright. And yeah, this is where the partner mechanic gets introduced. So... RE0 introduces a mechanic where basically you can swap in and out of characters, kind of like a Lego game. Uh, here, I can control Billy with my other analog stick, and um, yeah, I can either have him follow me, or I can have him wait while, I, while we split up. It's really cool, if I attack, he'll attack as well. Uh, like, if I were to shoot an enemy, then he would start shooting, and you can, you know, split your resources. So this mechanic, I'm not gonna lie, like, conceptually, is really awesome. But the way okay, you guys aren't gonna see it because I I don't I don't want to sound so arrogant naive. I'm not that great at video games, um, even RE games. But I am kind of an expert when it comes to this game because I've I've been playing it for the past week, right? Like I've I've had multiple runs. I've got the platinum trophy. I basically want to be in it, right? So I know all the puzzles. I'm gonna get to this fine. But on your first tr on your first time. Getting used to these mechanics is absolutely a huge hassle because it, it sucks. Your partner's AI is brain dead. Uh, you gotta worry about babysitting them the entire time. It's it's ridiculous. It's not it's not great. And then they don't even really utilize a lot of puzzles that involve like the partner mechanic. It's weird. This looks gorgeous. Oh my god, this makes me miss uh, pre background since this looks beautiful. Alright. 
fix this game book guy. Again, wait, where did the leeches go? <laughs> like, okay, dude, this, this mysterious singing opera man has, has had so many opportunities to just infect our characters. Alright. That's why this train is so unsurvivable, because it literally just got raided by so, like, hundreds of leeches. Probably upwards to, like, a thousand, maybe. So this, there was a lot of leeches we saw in that opening. Also, someone at Capcom really thought leeches were, like, the most terrifying thing on Earth. Granted, they're very creepy. Just, like, something like that, just sucking your blood, yeah. It's not a great, it's not a great thought. But, I mean, leeches? Of all things? I, I, I gotta stop being a nitpicking asshole. Alright. The reason I chose Billy, by the way, uh, to start doing all these puzzles is because Billy has more health than Rebecca. Um, so, so basically, I'm gonna go over, like, the two characters, like, mechanics. So, Billy, he can push certain items. Uh, his inventory thing is the lighter, which is only used for, like, one puzzle, to be honest. And, um, and he can take more damage. Whereas Rebecca, she can mix herbs. And her inventory thing, uh, what is her inventory thing again? I forgot. Oh yeah, it's a mixing set, which is also used for, like, a couple of puzzles. Forgot where I need to go. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and drop this knife. It's not bad having the knife, but it's not like a cold Veronica knife where it's busted. So yeah, I'm just gonna leave that. So yeah, um, well, like I was saying earlier, this chain is very linear, so you practically have to shoot every enemy that gets in your way. If you're using alternate controls like I am, you can maybe shoot them out, but I'm not, I'm not gonna try that shit, I'm not in the mood. Okay. It doesn't feel great using all of Billy's, but whatever. Also, uh, first just I get it, I need to drop Rebecca's handgun and um, give her Billy's, because I'm pretty sure Billy's is better. Which doesn't make a lot of sense, because Billy has like a standard issue handgun, whereas Rebecca has a... has the handgun like, given out from stars. Like, she's a part of like an elite task force, so you would think that she, her handgun would be more powerful. Yeah, even though we'll never see what it would have looked like, I've always wondered what the N64 version of this game would look like. Because, uh, if you guys are unaware, this game was, like, intentionally, like, being made for the N64. Because, like, the whole partner mechanic thing was gonna flex how, uh, due to not having, like, all the resources, like, requirements that comes with making a game for the PlayStation, um, they were gonna flex, like, seamless character switching that would have came into the N64. But, um, the... Game couldn't fit on the N64, <laughs> kind of big cat coming the ass a little bit. So um, yeah, they had to change it to the Nintendo GameCube. They did release footage of that N64 build, and it looks really interesting. What could have been? It looks really good for an N64 game, that's for sure. I don't know much about the N64. I'm not a Nintendo guy, but for that type of year and for that type of console, it looks pretty good. Uh, if you guys thought the singing opera man outside was ridiculous, uh, about to have more ridiculousness. How did they think this was all scary? <laughs> I'm not even like that typical Ori fan who's like, unless it's the most horrifying thing in the universe, the game sucks. Like, I think Resident Evil as much as, at this point, is as much of an action series as it is a, uh, a horror series. But, they were really trying hard, it's very easy to tell. Oh, uh, come on, pick it up. I got a shotgun! Get used to that. I, I'm gonna say that every single time I pick up a shotgun on any of these Let's Plays. So, I'm confused because when it comes to this, the Scorpion boss is actually pretty easy to cheese. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll use my pistol for it. Using a knife is actually the better way to go because you don't have to waste any ammo, but like an idiot, I dropped the knife. It's whatever. Oh, I spoiled what it was my <laughs> See, I'm really bad at this. I'm really bad at this because, like, these games are engraved in my mind. So I, I will say stuff without uh, thinking about, oh, wait, I said I wouldn't spoil It's not a huge spoiler. I mean, it's literally what's happening right now. That CG looks good, man. 
Yep, that is the scorpion. A giant ass scorpion. I don't get how this is terrifying, Capcom. I. Oh. No, 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 no. Wait, okay, I'm so. Alright, I have to be back here, I'm pretty sure. There's a way to stun lock him. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay. Okay, right here. Alright, guys, so be prepared for the hardest boss you've ever seen in your life. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Guys, that was the hardest boss I've ever seen in any Resident Evil game. I, I don't, okay. That was absolutely insane. That was cool. Like, I have no clue how I would have been able to get past that. So you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and just leave the hunting rifle. I know what a shotgun is uh, whenever we come to it. So I don't really need the handgun rifle. Not handgun rifle, hunting rifle. I should have used the two sucker shells that are automatically loaded into it in that scorpion boss to speed it up a little, but like I said, I have a smooth brain, so I didn't think about that. See, stuff like that is just the magic of Resident Evil, like, just making all these unique decisions. Like, okay, should I use this at this certain moment? Okay, should I drop this for inventory's sake? Uh, what should I bring here? Like, I just love that. It's the magic of Resident Evil. You can replay these games a thousand times, and sure, while you, have a, like, while you may have a set strategy, there are always a thousand other alternative things that you can, like, do along with it. Like, you can experiment so much. It's such a, such great games. I love them. I love Resident Evil, guys. <laughs> Yeah, a train is a very unique setting for not only just a Res Evil game, but also a horror game. I want to see more, uh, like, just games in general experiment with this setting, because it's really cool. Like, it's very tight, and then, like, the insides look very comfortable and warm, aside from, like, the decaying dead corpses. But then on the outside, you have, like, the rushing wind, uh, like, the, the pouring rain, like, as it's just speeding by. It looks so good. The only, like, is, uh, to your credit, it is tricky making a train environment, though, because it's very tight inside, so you can't really experiment with, like, a lot of gameplay stuff. But, I don't know, I, I think it's really cool. I, I just like anything with, a, with, with trains in it. <laughs> that has you, like, that has a cool set piece of a train. There's so many cool, like, unique ways you can do. Same thing with planes. Action scenes that take place on planes tend to be, like, some of the best action scenes ever. Kind of like that uh, one Modern Warfare, um... Well, with a D mission, where like the gravity inside the plane just goes crazy and like everyone starts flying around, or like Uncharted 3, like there's just, there's so many cool settings you guys can experiment with, come on, stop having like an open, like, field in the mountains or whatever, to have your action sequences. Like I said, as soon as I meet up with Billy again, I'm gonna drop Rebecca's handgun, because... I'm pretty sure for whatever reason, Billy's handgun is better. I could be completely wrong. I, I remember hearing that somewhere, but I don't remember it from, so I could not, that could not be right, but... Just in case. It, uh, no, like, both characters don't need a handgun also, because, um, with both characters using a handgun, that, like, you guys have to share handgun bullets. I prefer having one character have one type of weapon, and, uh, they can just stack on that weapon. I like having Rebecca handle the handgun, and then, uh, Billy handles the shotgun. Actually, it should be the other way around. Actually, yeah, I'll change it up. Because... Billy can take more damage, so I like playing as Billy more, just so, like, I don't, like, die. <laughs> That'd be pretty, pretty obvious reason, right? But I don't use the shotgun as much as I do the pistol, so I should have Billy be, like, the man on the front lines, the one who, like, engages a lot. And then Rebecca's the one with the more powerful arsenal, who, if I need to, I can switch to, like, on rare occasions and then blow up. I can't have one character carry all the weapons, because only six inventory spots per character, so... And I like Rebecca. I want to play as Rebecca instead of this lame Billy Cohen guy. <laughs> but, like, she's just not ideal to play as at all if you want to stay alive. Especially on hard mode. Oh my god, hard mode is fucked. Alright. Oh god. And this is what I mean by the AI. 
I mean, she doesn't have any weapons, so she can't do anything, but... This is, like, show you how, like, you have to kind of, like, take care of her. And same goes, if you're playing as Rebecca, you gotta take care of Billy. Like, they're both brain dead. They're both brain dead AI. Alright. Gold ring, first puzzle part. What else is there? Ooh, suck him. And to Capcom's credit, even though it was kind of tricky for them, at least from what I understand, they were able to implement this, um, like, just seamless character swaps, which is pretty cool. Now, instances like this, where, like, one character has to, like, hold a switch while the other goes to grab an item, it's when the game, like, utilizes its partner function for cool puzzles, and I like moments like that. I wish there was more of them in the game. Now, uh, get a little of this jump scare. Don't worry, game, I know your tricks, I won't be fooled. Alright, I wanna have a backup office since I can grab. There we go. Rebecca was kind of unintentionally the bait. <laughs> there we go. Alright, I'm just gonna run to this area. Um, zombies do typically respawn in this train segment. I I always wonder why people whine so much about the respawning zombies that happen in Code Veronica. This game is also guilty of that too. A lot of the stuff people claim Code Veronica had, like, revolving issues, it, it's actually kind of crazy. Every single complaint of Code Veronica is a complaint I have of this game. It's, it's wild. People say that it's easy to run out of ammo on Code Veronica. I've never had that experience of Code Veronica, but I can guarantee you that this game on hard mode, you will run out of ammo. Like, if you are not careful. It is crazy. And people also say, um, Cold Veronica drags, which I do somewhat agree with because, like, the pacing isn't the best part about that game, but this game is the king of dragging. It just goes on and on and on. And then people also say that Cold Veronica is, like, a ridiculous story that's, like, too fantastical and makes no sense. This, this story is the exact, like, this story, that's the exact definition of this story. It's wild. <laughs> Every single thing, people have an issue with, with Code Veronica. I have an issue with, in this game. People saying that uh, there's things that happened during Code Veronica that you sh that would never have been able to predict and like come out of nowhere. Same. This game never tells you when you need to like s switch characters. Like there would be instances where like a character would be unavailable for an extended amount of time, and there was no way you could have known that. <laughs> They did not have to go this far of the CG and yet they're doing it anyways. That that looks gorgeous. It looks disgusting, but gorgeous. Now I know why there's not a lot of cutscenes in the game, because they just sprinkle so many here. In this opening train segment. Alright. In huge respect for the people who developed this game for not cutting any corners and just having a complete graphical overhaul. Uh, so this game would look good on Nintendo GameCube. Alright. I'm just gonna take this off of my chest, and we're gonna run... Oh yeah, we're about to complete the train segment too. I, I completely didn't realize. Okay, so... I wanna ask you guys. What do you think of Resident Evil Zero's save you music? I think it's probably one of the most underrated saving themes out there. It, it's beautiful. I really like it. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh... Save here. It's, it's just... just it's just that there's this relaxing feel about it. Like, that's that's with every saving theme, but for this one, also, it's just... Oh, I just sound so at peace. <laughs> it's, I think it's probably the most relaxing out of any one that I've ever uh, listened to before. Villages is a close second, but this one, mmm, it's just so smooth. And then there's also all fours. Oh. Uh, for a second, I completely forgot where we need to go. <laughs> There's Evil Zero expert here, ladies and gentlemen. I am really glad that I revisited this game and learned it inside and out because originally I was planning on 100% on 100 and like learning the speedrun every single Red Evil game but this one because you see the reason I used back then was I, I, I basically just said I didn't like it but the main thing was I was also intimidated by it because this can be a difficult game in some in, in some aspects and I just didn't feel like learning it. It felt like too much of a hassle to learn it. But I, I was like, you know what? Screw it. I've had enough of all of you, all you zero. I'm gonna conquer you. I'm gonna conquer you. Once we sent you, and you're gonna you're gonna love it. You're gonna enjoy it. And um, it sounds very wrong. Never mind. But uh, yeah. And sure enough, I did just that.
and I'm, I'm happy for it. I, I'm definitely going to be speedrunning this game a lot later on. Like, not a lot, a lot, because the game isn't that fun to speedrun, but I'm just glad that I know how to is the thing. Oh yeah, uh, we have an instant heal that I can go ahead and combine. That's another cool thing that RE0 introduces as well. Um, if your inventory is full, but it's an item that you can use in the moment, there's a use option. So you don't have to empty out something from your inventory just to pick it up, combine it, and then pick, it, pick up the thing that you uh, left. No, it's very it's a very automatic process, and I think that's really cool. This is a really cool cutscene. Everything about these these cutscenes in the game is good. Uh, obviously, that's the great CG, but look! It's Albert Wesker and William Birkin! Look at together! And why did it contaminate both the lab and the mansion, as well as a train almost three miles away? That's irrelevant. We must make sure no knowledge of this gets out. Richard Waugh is the best Wesker. Well, no, DC Douglas is also a close contender. They're both really good. I can't decide which one's my favorite. What happened? Well, see, I've always wondered why doesn't that just happen to Rebecca and uh, and Billy? Why does this is singing opera man not just kill us both immediately with his leeches? And that is a horrifying way to go. Just continuously consumed by leeches until you get infected and turn into a zombie. That's not that's not the way anyone should go. <laughs> I know Billy said he's got to stop this thing, but I am letting Rebecca stay behind because, like I said, Billy has more health. If I get bit, it's not as important. Control panel for the break. Then you apply the break from here, okay? All right. Billy. What? Be careful. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, just like that, um, there is no more tension between these two for the whole rest of the game. <laughs> I I don't I don't understand. How hard was it to just have these two not get along for a little bit more? Alright, let's go. I love this music, by the way. It only plays two times during the entire game, but it just sounds so good. It really gives you a sense of urgency. It's nice. Just gonna run past these two, who are now zombified. The funny thing with Resident Evil counters is that there's never a situation where you really run out of time, it's just there to increase tension. Oh, uh, if I'm fast enough, I can avoid this guy coming up. Um, come on. Yes! Didn't have to waste any hang-on bullets. <laughs> Alright, it's best to just shoot everyone here. I wish I had a clear line of vision, but what are you gonna do? That's kind of the horror of uh, fixed hammer angles. You can't really see what's around the corner. This is something I really enjoy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, I might take a bite here, but that's okay. Because like I said, I, I'm Billy. So, Billy doesn't take as much punishment as Rebecca does. Alright, there goes one. Oh, I'm making a run for it. Alright, nice. The only uh, thing that I miss out with not being Rebecca is uh, what's in this cable car. Yeah, Edward's a zombie now. You have this emotional cutscene with Rebecca where she's like very sad, but. Uh, with Billy, he doesn't know this guy, so he just kills him. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this puzzle in my head. I I, I'm, I'm, I usually use a calculator, but I'm gonna restrain here. Alright, so what is it? 67. So what I do is I get the nearest factor of, of 9. So the nearest factor of 9 is... Okay, 63. What times 9 equals 63? What is 63 divided by 9? I actually do not know. I'm pretty sure it's it might be uh, 
Seven. So here I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, it was seven, and then four. It's really easy. You just take the nearest factor of nine and then add it by however more that uh, you need to do. Roger, I'll put the break on now. Uh what is this number? Oh crap, I missed this hangar anymore. I gotta pick that up. Is you I, I usually always remember that it's right there, but this time I forgot. Okay, 81. Okay, so this one's tricky because this is a thing of- Okay, here, uh, what's the nearest factor of 8? Uh, 80, which is 10, but I can't do 80, so, uh, shit. Okay, I'm gonna go for... Yeah, let's just do... Boom, 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 boom. So right now it equals 8. Oh, no, right now it equals 81, so I can't do it. Okay, yeah, that was wrong. Alright. Uh, here, okay, 8 times 9 equals 72. So we're going to do 72. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, 81 minus 72. Okay, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 88, uh, 9. 9, 9, 9, 9, 9. It's 9. Okay. I didn't have to put out a calculator. I usually always put out a calculator, but that was my first time doing it in my head. Quick maps. <laughs> that train is going by. I didn't, I never realized how fast it was going. Oh my god. Yeah. Dead. I was game. Uh, of all the really like nonsensical things our characters have survived over the years, this this cr train crash is not is not priority. They should have a, a maybe a bruised arm or like a broken bone here and there, but not not dead. Oh, Rebecca's hurt. Are you alright? Hey, you managed to stop the train. Yes, we managed. We have to find a way out. So yeah, this train segment is easily uh, my favorite. Oh no, Billy, 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 don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot. Yep, that's why I really don't like the, the partner system because the AI is just has to Fastest trigger finger, trigger finger ever. They waste all of the your ammo. You gotta make sure they don't have any of that on them. All right, and yeah, we're done with the train segment. And that, like I said, is the best segment of the game. After this, the game um, really starts to drag. But we have to have an important cutscene. This is our last important cutscene in a while. CG looks on fleek. I love it. This is a cool shot. The Umbrella Research Center? <gasps> the first general manager, Dr. James Marcus. James Marcus. Who on earth are those people? <laughs> She's just a rookie, a member of Stars. Hmm. What about the male? I'm unfamiliar with. Attention. Him. This is Doctor Marcus. Please be silent as we reflect. This is a pretty cool cutscene, and this game does introduce some cool lore aspects, like this whole chain facility. Unity breeds power. It's a little ridiculous, but. I like it. Now this is dumb. <laughs> it was this, everything revolving this guy is dumb. Needless to say, I contaminated the train to what? Revenge on Umbrella. I can't. I cannot. No. Oh. It's never explained either. It's never explained. That's the that's the thing too. Okay, like this guy is explained. His powers are explained. But why does he need to sing opera? The opera is never explained. Doctor Marcus. 
Ten years ago, Dr. Marcus was murdered by Umbrella. You helped them, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Okay, and now we are at the training facility, so I'm gonna probably end this part here. But yeah, uh, thank you all so much for watching. Next time we'll be going to uh, like the first half of the training facility, just walking around exploring. But yeah, um, I'm really looking forward to playing more RE0 with you guys, and um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have to, please like and subscribe, and as always, I will see you guys next time. Peace out.